riders have to have pace and they have to travel easy off a strong pace and then they have to build a quick end um, to, 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 to make up ground and, and that's what this fella really does. It's, it's probably a horse that's always going to be very hard to assess how much is in there because he only goes to the front and only does enough um, but he, he's very professional. By the brilliant Galileo and out of a Cherry Hinton stakes winning full sister to Giants Causeway, Glen Eagles was bred to be special and special is exactly what he was. A precocious juvenile, he won his maiden at the Curra on Irish Derby weekend in the month of June. But it's Glen Eagles now as they race inside the final 200 yards, stretching on a couple of lengths in front. Stevie's Wonder and Jamaica's been behind, but Glen Eagles a comfortable three winner. And after landing the Group 3 Tyros stakes the following month, he was next seen back at the Curra for the Group 2 Galileo Futurity. But Glen Eagles now has kicked and gone right through and opened up a couple of lengths over Verde Grace, gone second. But on the run up towards the final 100 yards, it's Glen Eagles. He then stepped up to Group 1 company for the national stakes. And it's Glen Eagles now and Joseph O'Brien going on from Toscanini and running up towards the finish. It's Glen Eagles will win it. In the pre Jean Luc Lagardère on Arc Day, he again proved much the best, but fell foul of the French stewards. Here comes Glen Eagles. Glen Eagles with a thrusting run to come and take it up. It could be another for O'Brien. And running on two is the stable mate, poor Envoy from Burnt Sugar. They race up towards the line. Glen Eagles by three quarters of a length to four miles. It's Glen Eagles at four Marston territories. And Glen Eagles wins the John Luke Lagardere. Another tip top two year old for Valley Doyle. He wouldn't have lost that race in Britain or Ireland, but the French rules are the French rules. He'd gone to Longshore as the winner of the National Stakes. He quickened up so well at Longshore, but he drifted to the right. He was demoted, but he was no doubt the best horse on the day, and he proved himself right up there with the very best of the 2014 Juveniles. The following spring, he reappeared in the 2000 Guineas. The race that really brings the season alive, that sets up the rest of the flat campaign, 2015. Bubbles will burst a plenty. But for one horse, the future is assured. Well, just look at him, he's very loose-limbed, he floats down, effortless. To me, he's an archetypal top-of-the-ground horse. Glenn Eagles goes forward, he's relaxed nicely since he's got down to the start, and he moved beautifully to post as well. And as Nick intimated there for the production of commercial stallions, there aren't too many more important races than the 2,000 guineas these days. And Glenn Eagles comes powering through to claim the advantage. Glen Eagles has posted a commanding performance, a performance of emphasis, a performance worthy of a 2000 Guineas champion, and he looks a rock solid, top notch, miling three year old. He's very straightforward, and by the time we'd walked down to the bookmakers there, he's already cleared himself and ready to go again. He's, you know, he, he travelled very easily, and as I said, they wasn't really able to lead him. Long the, the big thing about him is his travel and his pace, I suppose, Nick, but that's what he always showed, you know. Yeah, well done to Aidan O'Brien and all his team. Wonderful training performance, but the whole reason Aidan O'Brien trains horses is for Coolmore to make stallions, and what a prospect this is now. By Galileo, I don't think there's any argument that he's the, he's the best sire in the uh, best sire in the world. You're so thrilling, a pretty good filly in her own right, but a full sister to Giants Causeway. He's got pedigree, he looks like his dad, Galileo, and now he's got a superb performance to his name. Glenn Eagles now, whatever he does for the rest of his career, is firmly established as the next great Miling Stallion prospect at Coolmore. The dead ground at the Curra was far from ideal, but here he proved he had the courage to match his brilliance. And as he race into the final furlong now, I will what here comes Glen Eagles bursting through the centre end of the drama and Ballard on the near side, but Glen Eagles has come through. It didn't look likely a furlong and a half back, but he's done it. Glen Eagles does the double. In the second end of the drama, Ivanwood is third, four is uh, Ballardo, and nine to two on favourite from well off the pace, had to work hard, but he answered the call when it mattered and he's completed the Guineas double. There was never really any doubt. He's two guineas won now. He's got a pedigree to die for, and he's got a performance to die for. Then it was on to Royal Ascot for the St James's Palace Stakes. As they enter the final furlong, Anglin Eagles strikes the front from Consort. Running on is Lathanok in third place, but racing up towards the line. What a gorgeous colt this is. Anglin Eagles wins the St James's Palace. 
drew away to win by two and a half lengths, won it comfortably. Tight second, Lathanok on the outside of Consort, then Actabante, and Make Believe didn't pick up when the pressure was applied, but no worries for Glen Eagles here. He completes a hat trick this season. The English Guineas, the Irish Guineas, now the St James's Palace, Group 1's all the way. You want to ride the best horses and um, he's about the best one there is at the minute. This currently the best three-year-old in training in Europe. He'd be the best horse in your yard, wouldn't he, right now? Ah, yeah, no doubt, Claire. Yeah, he's 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 very very good horse. You know, like I don't think we've had a miler as good as him. Like very 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 classy horse. Well, the St James's Palace Stakes has a, a role of honour to die for, and Glen Eagles had it, his name to that list in tremendous fashion. Small field, but he settled beautifully. Summer ground, he glided across it, quickened up on demand. A win by clear daylight with plenty in hand. So that was just confirmation of what he'd shown at Newmarket, a crack miler. What I can remember Glen Eagles for is that brilliance as a two-year-old and first classic of the season, the 2000 Guineas, won by so many top quality milers and he put it to bed in such decisive fashion. The combination uh, of a pedigree allied to form on the track is irresistible in this business. Well, if he'd kept the Lagardère, that would have been the national stakes and the Lagardère, probably two of Europe's most influential two-year-old racers. But he used that as a springboard to even greater heights at three and his 2000 guineas victory at Newmarket was a very interesting race in terms of sectional times for it was almost a perfectly run race from start to finish a truly run test of the thoroughbred and he was well on top at the end but if that race left any thoughts that he'd had the run of the race they were to be dispelled in the Irish 2000 guineas which simply put just wasn't run to suit him the pace in the first half of the Curra was only steady and leaving aside any doubts about the ground, he ran 35.2 seconds for the last three furlongs at the Curra and finished the race well on top. That's an exceptional split given the conditions, given the undulations of the track. And it proved that this horse had a ton of dimensions to his ability. He was a horse that, given the right ground conditions, was almost impossible to beat.